Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about why I don't use low light cameras and why I really don't care if a, a camera has good low light capabilities. Um, lately there's been cameras coming out that have phenomenal low light capabilities, the a7S III um, being the primary one that people like to go to. Um, and a lot of the Sony cameras as well have, have phenomenal low light capability. The appeal of having a camera that can see in very low light situations um, it does appear to be a big draw. Um, instead of getting noisy images, images that have that, that awful little digital noise that gets added when you boost your ISO, um, you get to have that completely clean when you shoot in very low light situations. Now for me, although I understand why that's appealing, I don't personally care about that. And the reason behind that is because 99.9% .9 of the time, if not 100% of the time, I'm actually lighting my shots myself. Um, and, and this doesn't just stand for corporate work, I also do this for weddings or, or pretty much any other shoot. Um, I'm either using lighting modifiers or I'm bringing in my own lights. Um, and so that kind of, for me, takes away the need for low light because I'm typically in control of how exposed my image is simply with the lighting. Now the reason that I opt to do this over just boosting my ISO and getting a brighter image that way is just boosting your ISO doesn't actually accomplish what you think it'll accomplish. Yes, your image will be brighter, but the lighting actually looks trash when you do that. You're just using ambient lights that are in the room, um, or at night you have a bunch of different lights from you know, street lights and stores and, and all these different things that are, are casting onto your subject. And that actually isn't what you want because you don't know what color temperatures those are going to be. You'll probably have a lot of mixed color temperatures. Um, you'll probably have a lot of harsh lighting. And, and, and these are qualities of light that you don't really want in your image. Um, typically what you want is you want nice soft looking lighting. Um, even if you have pretty harsh lighting when it's casting on skin tones, you, you usually do want to soften it off. Um, at least a decent amount. Really, really harsh light typically does not look good on your subjects. And so we want to soften that light off. We also want it to be coming from the right direction. We don't want it to be coming from, you know, below your subject or above your subject, um, or even, even the wrong angle from the side can cannot look the best. And so we want to be in control of direction of light, where that light is actually falling on your subject. The third thing is we want to control the color of light. Um, if you know anything about white balance, you know, tungsten lights, indoor lights tend to sit around, you know, 34, 36, um, 100 Kelvin, and then daylight tends to be around 5,500 um, or sometimes up to 6,000 Kelvin. And so typically you want to be in control of that. You want to know that what's white in your image is actually reflecting as white, that your camera actually sees it as white. And so that means that your, your white balance and the color of your light should actually be in sync. If your white balance is 5,500, then the light should actually be 5,500. You should be able to see white as white in your image. And there are exceptions for this. Sometimes you want stylized images, you're using RGB lights, you know, you have a scene in your shot that is at a party and there's a dance party and they have all those, you know, DJ RGB lights that are going on and for the application it makes sense. Um, so yeah, there are exceptions, but for the most part, you know, 80 to 90% of the time you're wanting your whites to read as white. And so for me, it's very important that my lighting is predictable, that I know that what's coming out of my lights is what I can set my white balance to. And that's gonna be the easiest way to get well-colored images. And so that's the issue for me with low light cameras is it doesn't actually fix any of the issues that I'm trying to avoid. All it does is it allows you to raise your exposure without introducing digital noise to your sensor, um, which, which is a helpful thing and I do understand that, but what I'm usually looking for to create a cinematic image, to create an image that is pleasing, is soft lighting. It's you know lighting that has a nice gradient across the face, that it's not too harsh, looking for accurate colors. I'm looking for the right direction. I'm looking to control that direction. And, and so low light cameras just don't hit a need for me because more often than not, I'm using my own lighting to fix those exact problems that I just talked about. And so I don't need a camera with low light. Um, in fact, I just purchased the, the Red Komodo and Red cameras, um, in fact, most cinema cameras aren't known for their low light capabilities. And, and they don't really need it. 
Most of the shows that you watch on Netflix or in the theater, they're shot on these cinema cameras and yet they look gorgeous. That's what we would point to as what we want to achieve as being a good quality image. And so they don't have low light capabilities. Why do they look so good? It's the lighting. The lighting is the determining factor of whether your image looks good or if it looks bad. Um, and yes, there are a lot of other factors. I would say that from a cinematographer's perspective, lighting is the foundation. Yes, there's so many things you can build upon after you have that. Um, and, and there's so many things that go into a good looking image as far as composition, dynamic range. There's all these different things that make a shot visually pleasing. But I would argue that lighting is the most noticeable. When you don't have good lighting, you can tell. I found that that's the number one thing that if clients have complaints, it's about the lighting. They may not know that it's about the lighting, but it is. They they often are asking for what you know the why does the shot look so their skin tones just look very oily or there's you can see every pore in in their skin or you know it just it, it doesn't look very flattering on the person that we shot and and usually the answer for that is lighting. If we had proper lighting, then the image would look phenomenal. It would look great because we get to soften off those shadows, make it look very flattering, very pleasing. Um, and so that's what I have found to make the biggest difference in my work is tackling lighting and making sure that I give um, my attention to that. And so low light, I don't need it. I don't think most people uh, need it. And so that would be my advice. There's nothing wrong with purchasing an A7 III and there are scenarios where is the light capability will save you. Um, but don't rely on that. Don't use low light capability as a crutch. Um, just learn how to light, learn what direction to light from, learn quality of light, color of light. Um, and, and that is going to make a huge difference in your work far above getting a camera that has incredible low light capability. If this video helped you out, consider giving it a like. Also consider subscribing to get more content like this.